All right, welcome. Today, we are diving into a topic that sounds, let's be honest, pretty intimidating, financial engineering. You hear that phrase and you probably picture complex algorithms, maybe some Wall Street wizards in a back room somewhere, but at its core, it's really just about solving problems. So let's jump in and engineer a clearer picture of what this is all about. You know, if you've ever felt that this stuff is just too complicated, you are definitely not alone. The author of our source material, Kizim Kocha, felt the exact same way. This quote just nails that feeling, right? That this is some exclusive club totally out of reach for the average person. But as he found out, that's not the whole story, not even close. So what changed his mind? Well, like a lot of great stories, it all started with a simple conversation, a chance meeting that kind of blew the doors off what he thought was this secret locked away world. The whole thing happened at a conference in Dubai. The author runs into this trader named Sarah, and she's not just any trader. She's incredible sharp, super experienced, and she had totally transformed her entire career using the very tools he thought were impossible to grasp. Her story is really the key to unlocking this whole topic. And here's the thing that makes her story so relatable. Sarah didn't start out as some kind of genius expert. Nope, she was skeptical, just like him, just like maybe you and me. But she had this curiosity that wouldn't quit. So she started digging in, going to workshops, reading everything she could, talking to experts. Her journey began from a place of doubt, which makes where she ended up all the more amazing. And the results? They were absolutely game-changing. By using these principles, Sarah wasn't just gambling anymore. Her trades got laser-focused, she really understood how to manage her risk in a smart way, and, well, her profits went through the roof, to levels she'd only dreamed of. Which kind of begs the question, right? What exactly is this stuff she was doing? Okay, let's just strip away all the complicated jargon for a second. At its heart, financial engineering is just this taking an engineer's practical, problem-solving mindset and applying it to financial challenges. It's less about some abstract math theory and way more about finding clever, practical solutions to real-world money problems. So, how did Sarah pull off those incredible results? It wasn't some kind of magic trick. It was all built on two super fundamental ideas. I mean, these are the absolute bedrock of all of finance. And once you get these two things, everything else just starts to click into place. All right. Let me ask you a quick question. Would you rather I give you 100 bucks right now, today, or 110 bucks, but you have to wait a whole year to get it? I bet you have a gut feeling, but let's break down the logic behind it. This whole concept is called the time value of money. And the big idea is that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. Why? Well, for one, you can invest it. That $100 today, even with a pretty modest 5% return, becomes $105 in a year. Plus, you've got inflation, which is always nibbling away at the value of future money. So that 110 in a year might not be the slam dunk it looks like. Okay, building block number two is the risk slash return trade-off. This is basically a law of the financial universe. You can't escape it. It says that if you want a chance to make bigger profits, you almost always have to take on bigger risks. There's really no such thing as a free lunch here. Just think of it like a spectrum, right? On one end, you've got something super safe, like a government bond. You're almost certainly going to get your money back, but the return is going to be pretty low. Then, way over on the other end, you've got something like a stock. It's way riskier, but the potential for a huge return is so much higher. Every single investment decision is basically about finding where you're comfortable on that spectrum. Okay, so we've got our two building blocks. Money now is better than money later, and more risk can mean more reward. With those in our back pocket, let's look at the actual tools financial engineers use, and we're gonna focus on the big one, the one you always hear about, derivatives. Now, I know the word derivative sounds super complicated, maybe even a little scary, but I absolutely love this analogy. Just think of them as financial Lego blocks. By themselves, they aren't good or bad. They're just versatile pieces that you can click together in all sorts of different ways to build things. Maybe you build a structure to protect you from risk, or maybe you build a whole new investment strategy. So let's see how these Lego blocks actually work in the real world to solve a really common problem. In fact, this example is probably one of the oldest and clearest ways to see financial engineering in action. Imagine a farmer. She plants her wheat, and now she has to wait months for the harvest. Her biggest risk? What if the price of wheat totally tanks by the time she's ready to sell? To protect herself, she uses a derivative called a futures contract. It's basically a deal she makes today to sell her wheat at a price that's already locked in for the future. This whole process of protecting yourself is called hedging. And this is where you see the power of that tool. 
Let's say prices do fall. The farmer without the hedge, she's stuck. She has to sell at that new low price and she loses a ton of money. But our smart farmer who hedged, she's protected. Yeah, she has to sell her actual wheat for a low price, but she makes a profit on her futures contract that basically cancels out the loss. That derivative acts like an insurance policy, protecting her bottom line. It's brilliant. So, okay, a farmer's hedge is a simple, powerful idea. But what does that have to do with the massive global economy? Well, it turns out that exact same logic scales up way up. The world's biggest companies use these exact same principles. So instead of worrying about the price of wheat, a global corporation is hedging against the sudden change in interest rates or the value of the euro versus the dollar. Financial engineers use these Lego blocks to put together massive multi-billion dollar mergers to perfectly balance risk for huge pension funds and even to design the perfect financial foundation for a company. So here's the main takeaway. It doesn't matter if you're a single farmer trying to protect one crop or a giant global bank managing trillions of dollars. The fundamental logic is exactly the same. It is all about using financial tools to identify a problem, analyze the risks, and engineer a smart solution. And that really brings us to our final thought for today. There's no doubt that financial engineering has given us incredibly powerful tools. They let us manage risk and build our modern economy on a scale that was unimaginable before. But that power, that complexity, it comes with a huge responsibility, which leaves us with a pretty big question to think about. Are we truly the masters of these tools? Or are they, sometimes, the masters of us? Thanks for tuning in.